A record lease for storage, BART finally opens at the Fremont factory, fleet sales have arrived, and a PSA regarding autopilot. Here are your Tesla tidbits for March 28, 2017. Today's show starts at Teslarati, where Tesla has agreed to a record deal to lease storage space in advance of the Model 3 launch. The deal is for 1.3 million square feet in the Oaks Logistics Facility at a reported cost of $8.9 million per year, which is being referred to as the largest industrial lease signed in San Francisco East Bay history. The facility is located in Livermore, 20 miles northeast of the Fremont factory, which for the size of the storage requirement is super close to the factory. Oaks is a newer facility that was built between 2014 and 2015, with three warehouses ranging in size from 295,000 square feet to 634,000 square feet. Tesla was already leasing two of the three, and now has the run of the entire facility. Teslarati notes that it is helpful that the facility happens to be in the direction of Gigafactory 1, and so the storage space could also be used as a staging for the battery packs incoming from Gigafactory 1. For the cost and size of this deal, maybe it's just me, but it sounds like Tesla actually got a pretty sweet deal on this as opposed to having to acquire land and build its own buildings. Teslarati notes that Elon has been concerned in the past with the problem of running out of space at Fremont, but with this lease now has a storage facility that is about 25% the size of the factory. Freeing this space up obviously leaves more room for equipment and assembly functions instead of storage space, hopefully contributing to a quicker ramp-up appeasing the 400,000 folks with Model 3 reservations. Electrek reports that the long-awaited BART station at the Fremont factory is finally open. This will solve a lot of problems, chief of which is the overcrowding of the parking lot, which has led to the hilarious Instagram account, at Tesla Parking Lot. If you want to go down a, a hilarious rabbit hole, occasionally mixed with sadness for humanity, check it out. The other issue it solves is related to the first. With Tesla currently employing 6,210 people at the plant, looking to expand to 9,315, there's no way that the parking situation could accommodate 50% more people when it's already bursting at the seams. The BART station can help resolve this, but this is of course assuming a significant adoption of the mass transit solution, which is no guarantee. Hopefully this can alleviate the stress of parking until the cars can handle it themselves. While I'll certainly miss the comedy coming from the Tesla parking lot Instagram account, if it means happier workers, I'm all for it. Back to Teslarati, where they bring us news that Tesla is now dedicating resources to fleet sales. The company launched a new corporate sales webpage that says that Model S and Model X are the perfect company cars. The page lays out the argument that while the car is initially more expensive than other possible fleet choices, the savings in fuel and maintenance overtake its competition in the long term. When Model 3 becomes available, you have to think that this becomes a much easier decision with a significantly less expensive model. Check out the page at tesla.com slash corporate. Lastly, back at Electrek, we have a story that ends up taking the form of a public service announcement. Last Thursday, the owner of a Model X P90D got into a horrific accident with a semi-truck. The situation entailed a disabled pickup truck off the side of a highway that required the semi take a sudden corrective action, swerving into the Model X owner's lane to ensure it avoided the truck. However, the Model X owner in the next lane was on autopilot and was distracted. While the driver says the collision alert warned him of the imminent collision about a second before the impact, the warning was not in time for him to take appropriate action. Thankfully, the driver walked away with nothing more than a sore neck, which is astounding when looking at the wreckage. While the driver blames autopilot for the wreck, he also credits the safety engineering for saving his life. This is just yet another reminder and public service announcement that these cars do not yet drive themselves autonomously. Autopilot will keep you in your lane, change lanes for you if you request it, and adjust speed to follow traffic if it is running slower than your cruise speed. It is not yet meant to handle all driving conditions. Always be alert of your surroundings and ready to take over. I would even say that if you see a situation that even looks like it could get squirrely, just take over. In these instances, you're still better able to handle that vehicle than the computer. At least for now. You can find the links to today's full stories in the show description. This show operates on a value-for-value value model. If you get some value out of what I do each day, please consider supporting me at patreon.com slash Tidbits. As always, thanks to super patrons John Waltower, Drew Schuyler, Cookie UK, and John Waller for supporting the show at the $10 plus level. If you have nothing extra to spare, that's totally fine. Please feel free to support the show with your positive iTunes reviews and subscriptions, as well as across other services on the internet. Lastly, if you're in the market for a Tesla, you can get yourself a thousand bucks off while supporting the show and super patron Drew Schuyler by using the referral link TS. 
la slash andrew1233. That's all for today. If you have feedback for me, the best way to be heard is to tweet at Tesla Tidbits. I'll see you all back here again tomorrow. Until then, keep it charged and hit the road.